Welcome back, everyone. We've gone 20 and 11 since our last stream. We now have the top record or tied for the best record in the National League, and we have the best run differential in all of baseball. The Reds look pretty dangerous, though. They got the hold on the NL wild card, and we're going to take a look at them in a little bit. The AL Central and AL West look like they might be pretty exciting races, and what the heck is wrong with the Phillies? We're going to check in on them, too. And then we're going to welcome them to the Astrodome and hopefully beat them. And in other news, the home run record, could it fall this year? Carlos Delgado is on pace for 65 home runs. He's got 22 already. He's a catcher in this save. Certainly hurts his chances when he's not able to play 162 games. But let's get into the Astro Astros. But first... Please give the video a thumbs up if you're liking this and help others find it. You can also subscribe to my channel and be notified of other new videos. I'm starting to create tutorials now as well if you are interested in that. So back to the Astros. Our offense is on fire. We are number one in runs scored in the National League despite playing in the Astrodome, which is, to put it nicely, a pitcher's ballpark. We're even second in steals. Not usually my strategy, but I've been ramping it up more and more to play to that ballpark. And we got a lot of guys who can run on this team. Uh, starting pitching, on the other hand, has not been so smooth since the last save. Pete Harnish, in particular, has been really bad. We'll take a little bit of a closer look in a minute. We also have some injury updates. Unfortunately... Our, one of our best outfielders, Daryl Sherman, who's been playing left field since Barry Bonds got hurt. Sherman is now injured. I don't actually know how long it's going to be. It, I believe when the game happened, it said knee injury, which is always a little bit scary. So hopefully we're not dealing with an, with an ACL. It's been, it's been a couple days since the injury happened. and Usually the longer you wait, the worse the injury it is. So he's a big loss. He was... Really lethal at the top of the order. Look at that slash. 316, 428 on base percentage. Swiped 11 bags already, too. 139 weighted runs created plus. Tough loss. If only I had a good replacement for him, though. Oh, yeah. I do. So Barry Bonds is finally off the injured list. I got a couple games of rehab for him. So now he becomes Daryl Sherman's replacement. Could do worse. Could do worse. Six, Only six MVPs. But, you know. So the other thing this means is Andrew Jones will stay in the big leagues. The intent was when Barry Bonds came back, he'd take over left. Sherman would move over. He and Walton would kind of play a lot of center and right together. Uh, but no, Andrew Jones is uh, is the guy for a little while longer. So that's, uh, that's a little bit of a shift that we're going to see now. Let's check out some of the hitters we've got and how things have been going lately. And this lineup just continues to flourish overall. Great combination of contact and power and speed. So we've got a little bit of everything. Greg Jeffries has definitely been our MVP. Taking a look at that line, it's pretty awesome. He's hitting 357 now. His on base is 440. It seems like everybody on our team's got like an on base percentage over, actually, almost everyone does have over 340. A lot of a lot of 400s in there too but jeffries has got a huge slash line he's already racked up almost three war and we're early in june still chad townsend has been raking as well he's now second in the national league with 19 home runs i don't think he's a threat for the home run record uh he's got massive splits and he's platooning with jeff manto who is that is just a sick platoon i have going on with with Chad, Sound, Chad Townsend and Jeff Manto at first base. Hoyles is, Chris Hoyles is second on the team with 11 home runs, also having a, a great month, a little bit of a slower April. And then Ray Durham and Jerome Walton are providing some great on-base percentage and speed. Uh, Durham's been hitting lower in the order, but he'll move up to the leadoff spot with uh, Sherman injured. And Barry Bonds will slot back into that customary three-hole. And even Alex Rodriguez is just thriving. Nice, you know, hitting over 300 now. Some great power, nine home runs. Hi, Babbitt. Kind of got to watch out for that one. Um, but 
pretty good. Uh, I forgot to mention Andrew Jones there too. You saw him get a lot of hits and finally get some hits in the big leagues the last time I streamed. He's really been holding his own nicely in center field, so no worries about keeping him up a little while longer. Still want to get him back into the minors for a little longer and control some service time. There should be time for that. Uh, the only real downside is, well, Klesko is kind of a down downer, but he's just been pinch hitting. But Tim Bogar, yikes. He's now one for 40. Good for a 0.28 on base percentage. Good job, buddy. Uh, mentioned A Rod. He's doing great. Hi, Babbitt. But uh, that didn't stop me. I uh, went ahead and entered into some extension talks. Uh, he wanted eight years, and he's got five years of uh, under contract with me. And the first five years that he wanted would actually have paid him less than his arbitration estimate. And then the three free agent years were really reasonably priced. But I got greedy, and I asked him, asked for a $8.1 million instead of the $9 million and change that he wanted. And now he only wants to do five years, which is when he hits free agency anyway. Those five years, he also wants, wants much significantly uh, much higher pay. Still lower than the arbitration figure, but there's nothing prompting me like, I've got to do this deal right now. So I'm going to sit on this one for a little while. Era doesn't enter uh, arbitration until 1998 anyway, so I don't think anything's going to change too much between now and then. So that's the Arod situation. Maybe we'll get him signed this year. Maybe we won't. On the pitching side, our hero of May, well, two heroes of May. The first one's been the surprise hero, Mike Sorotka. He's 3-0. and He's got an ERA just over 3. His FIP's actually better than that. Uh, he did really nice for us down the stretch until, unfortunately, game 162. He got crushed by the Cubs. In, I don't want to relive that nightmare anymore, so I'm just going to move on. But thank you, Mike Sorotka, for coming up for Jason Bure, who was wild and was really ineffective in early May, and he's been great. Tommy Green continues to be fantastic for us. His ERA just took a big spike because he gave up seven runs in his last outing, but he won... National League Pitcher of the Month in May, going 5-1 and one with a 3.15 ERA and 36 strikeouts over 40 innings. So he's really been our ace so far for a majority of this season with Soraka kind of giving him some more recent competition. And Pete Harnish has been, oh my god, bad. Uh, he's actually pitching today, but his, uh, his ERA actually got into the mid-sevens, and fortunately his last outing was a little bit better, good enough to get the, the snowflake off of his name. So hopefully he can keep the better pitching going today against the Phillies. And then our bullpen ace, John Wetland, oh boy, he's been amazing. His uh, strikeout-to-walk ratio is now 26-0. to zero. He hasn't walked a batter in 22 innings. He's given up one home run, I think, one or two. Blown one save, but... It's pretty close to the epitome of domination. And then one other thing that uh, I'm keeping an eye on is uh, Arthur Rhodes has been less than inspiring as now my only lefty in the bullpen. And it's supported by his ratings declining here. So I think what that means is getting a top shelf lefty reliever. That might be on the top of my wish list as the trade deadline approaches. Nobody's doing anything yet, despite the fact these guys are on the trade block. They'll ask for, like, Barry Bonds or else. Um, but it usually heats up around the end of June. So Dave Richards, about sixth down on the list, is the closest thing on this screen that resembles a top-flight lefty reliever. He's disruptive, though. I have enough clubhouse problems as it is with, well, Rhodes is selfish, Durham is selfish, and Steve Sadecki is selfish. So i got to be careful who I bring in. But uh, outside of the lefty relievers, I do feel good about all the other positions, right field probably being the most important need. But again, by the end of the year, I expect to have Bonds in left, Jones back up in center, and then Walton and Sherman will, hopefully, if Sherman's healthy, can platoon in right. So right field's even, only if I have injury issues. So that's kind of just being open to upgrading anything. Like if the Giants actually are willing to trade Pudge Rodriguez, that's certainly something I have to listen to. And same goes for pretty much any position. Any position except for left field where Bonds is. And then one quick look at a prospect I have in my organization. Ted Lilly 
Just drafted him this year, dominated A ball. Uh, double A's proven to be more of a challenge, so it seems like this is the right fit for him right now. Certainly fits with the rest of some of my other pitchers. Low movement, extreme fly ball, which makes most people completely freak out. But uh, from what I've seen and listening to like, AZ Axel, that the extreme fly, fly, fly ball is not as scary as it used to be. It's kind of been normalized. Combined with low movement, you're definitely going to give up some home runs, but the Astrodome does a good job of swallowing up a lot of fly balls that would be in home runs in other parks. So we'll see how this all unfolds with him. I guess my current starters is a, you know, it's a good example of this. Actually, ruining my own case, Pete Harnish is a good example of that, but this year it's uh, not going so well for me. I wouldn't say it's just the home runs for him. So that's Ted Lilly. We'll perhaps see him in the bigs in a couple of years when some of my starters contracts run out and then let's check on the reds like i said they're hanging tough three and a half back we've got kind of a similar profile as us they are right behind us in run score they're second and maybe not quite dominant in every single category but they're pretty good they got a nice deep lineup at least through the seven or six hole uh, and they got a nice ace in Chris Nabholz, who uh, almost took the Yankees to the World Series last season. He's 8-1 and one with a low 3 ZRA. Uh, they do have a couple glaring holes, which is good and bad. I mean, it's good in the sense that, okay, I'm clearly stronger than they are. Like At catcher, Francisco Cabrera, if that name rings a bell, 1992 NLCS MVP, the guy who drove in Sid Bream. Um, but he's not good. And then they've got Kevin Warden left, who's not good either. And then their bullpen might be one of the worst I've seen in the National League. So the good news is, okay, those are clear advantages I have. The bad news is those are pretty easy to upgrade. So we'll see if the Reds are aggressive at trade deadline and then become a real threat. But what they do have going for them for sure is they may have the best player in baseball now. Rich Becker, who's like a fourth outfielder journeyman kind of guy in real life is your 80-80 gold glove center fielder ridiculous on base machine who still isn't even done developing so he's yes yeah, on base is 436 this year he actually did like a 467 two years ago i feel like that's going to be the profile he's going to smack 20 home runs a year pretty scary to have in my division so rich becker love the love the talent randomness bring in some I like it even better when it brings like sort of fringe major leaguers that you actually know and turns them into hall of famers it's a little different when it's like I've never heard of this minor leaguer so Rich Becker's a fun story another guy they have is Pedro Guerrero the 39 year old captain who just is like Peter Pan I guess he's still going strong I had him what 10 seasons ago now for the Padres I acquired him from the Dodgers. He had been my nemesis when he was in Los Angeles holding the Padres back. I finally just, well, if you can't beat them, take all their players. So I took Pedro Guerrero and won our second World Series with him. And here we are, 10 years later, and I'm facing off with him as a red. So, uh, and the reason why I have this up too is he actually just hit a big milestone, 2,500 hits just on uh, May 28th, a week or two ago. So, uh, I don't think he's going to get to 300, but the way he just doesn't age and doesn't, I mean, he's aging, he just doesn't decline. Never know. Another milestone worth showing is Howard Johnson, who I had on the Astros in 1994, part of our miserable, miserable team that we had. He got 2,000 hits pretty recent. He actually got it against me. He had a home run against me in a game that the Rockies beat us. Yes, we lost to the Rockies. <laughs> But we took two out of three out of them. But he's having a really nice season in Colorado. Of course, everybody has a nice season in Colorado. At least every hitter has a nice season in Colorado. Then one more, a pretty big milestone. John Jaha also got 2,000 hits. He's only 30 years old. So he seems like a lock to get 3,000 just with some good health. Uh, heck, I mean, at this pace, he, I mean, if he were to like somehow play until he's 40, then you're talking about 4,000 hits. Pete Rose is not the all-time hits leader in this save. It is uh, that Ty Cop guy still has uh, the uh, the hits. So it's like, who knows? You, you just never know here. He's played 10 seasons, 2,000 hits, 
10 more season, 2,000 more hits. You're in the ballpark. We'll see. Uh, and he actually just signed a nice big extension with the Royals, too. So he'll be in Kansas City for another five years. And then one more. We've got an another uh, milestone. Really, two milestones. So first, Tim Scott got his 300th career save. And he's at 307 now. Raleigh Fingers is still the all-time save leader in this save. He had 309, which means Tim Scott is outside of a catastrophic arm injury in the next three appearances. He's going to be the all-time saves leader pretty soon. So that'll be pretty neat for a guy that uh, I actually acquired when I was the general manager of the Padres back in 1985. Um, so, yeah, cool for him. Now over to the Phillies. They've been terrible. I would have figured they'd compete once again for the NL East, and it's just not happening for it, for them. 25-34 and 34 after predicting... OSA, anyway, predicted them to win 89 games. So they're third in home runs. They've always done that well when you've got Mark McGuire and Eddie Williams, and Matt Williams. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr.'s hurt. Yeah, I, you don't need to tell me about that. That hurt us badly when we had him last year. Uh, but Eddie Williams is going pretty strong. He's got 21 home runs, second in Major League Baseball, the only one in the NL ahead of Chad Townsend. But their starting pitching's been so atrocious. You got some names that have had great careers. Melito, Perez, Brian Holman. I mean, I had Holman with the Rangers. I had Hanson with the Rangers, too. And you had John Smoltz on this rotation. And look at those ERAs. 5, 5, 588, 672, 855. That's 0 7 with an 855 for John Smoltz. He's not the John Smoltz in this save. He's kind of an average starter. But I never would have guessed it would have been that bad for them. Of course, I get to face the one guy who's not performing poorly, Tim Rumor, who's, yes, you've never heard of him because he never pitched in the big leagues, but he's had a nice career for the Phillies, actually. But uh, that is all you need to see to understand why they're so bad. Starters ERA is 13th out of 14. I imagine the Rockies are 14th. So, yeah, that brings us, uh, so that's who we're playing today. We got, uh, we got the Phillies in town. We got uh, Pete Harnish. Hopefully not being terrible. I'll Pete Harnish going up against very tough and a very right-handed heavy Phillies lineup. Mark Rudzelanek has broken up into the big leagues. It's a base hit off of Harnish. He's given up just a ton of hits to get that high ERA. 82 hits in 62 innings. That helps. Nailed Rudzelanek at third. Wow, another extra base hit. Given up. We got Eddie Williams. Looking. So our lineup is a little different than usual with left-handed starter Tim Rumor. We have Jeff Manto will hit fifth and play it first. And then Greg Colbrin been using it catcher against the lefties. It's not better better than Hoyles, but he's got stronger splits than Hoyles does, so I figured this would be the good days to give Hoyles a day off. Right now with Harnish, it's just like, hold on, buddy. Giving up his fair share of hits, and today's been no different. Three in an inning and two thirds. And Colburn can't help him out this time, and that's a, another base hit. This is this is Harnish. It's not just the Babip though. He's been walking more guys, giving up some home runs. So we need to get some runs here. Bonds first bat back in a while. Manto continues raking. Yeah, double play for Aaron. All right, back to the top for the Phillies, and another base hit. Rosalonic oh, steals it this time. Strikeouts are helping Harnish. Infield hit for Mark McGuire. Write that one down. 
Another infield hit. Diving catch. Whoa, he threw him out at home too. That was game-turning play by Jerome Walton. Double play. Bases loaded. Now we're getting infield hits. Greg Colbrun, our, our catcher. And E6. So Harnish can bunt both runners over, hopefully. Or not. Durham tags it. It's caught out and left. Tag and go to third. Get a wild pitch here or something. Well, it doesn't look like it. Oh, he dropped it. He dropped it. Chapuner dropped it and right. And it's another run now with an infield hit by Jeffries. Tons of infield hits in this game. Just gift runs. Bonds is over two. I'm just hitting 258 now. He was kind of in a slump when he got hurt. I'd like to see him turn that around. More hits for the Phillies. All right, Colburn's throwing out two base runners now. Two out of four. Very good ratio for us. Jeff Manto does it again. This platoon we have at first base is sick. So we've got, Townsend's got, what is it, 19 home runs I think I said he had? And Manto's got eight. So that's 25 home runs in early June between our two first basemen. Now Manto plays, he mixes in third base, second base too. But it's been fantastic. Wow, we're even giving a pitch to the pitcher. But we're going to retire Grudzelanik for the first time. And maybe turn two? No, nope, just one. Got to get the power hitters out. Strikes out McGuire. Jodge and raindrops for sure. Walton with that diving catch slash assist. Outfield assist. Play of the game so far. Pete Harsh has himself a double. So both pitchers faring well. Ray Durham not faring well today. We'll go for Walton. So Jeffries can drive in a two out, a two out RBI here. That's pretty well hit, but Buner gets to that one and closes the glove on it this time. Okay, that's a good way not to give a hit, is to hit him yourself. Oh boy, he caught it out there. Whew. Another base of 10 hits. And now we make an error. Both runners advance. So tying runs at second. And one of them will come in on the ground out. If we can retire. All right, we do retire Doug Robbins and we keep the lead. Nothing's easy for Harnish right now. Bond's got himself a hit. If Manto can do it again. All right, another hit. I was kind of talking about a home run, but I'll absolutely take a first to third single. Oh, man. Two strikeouts in a row. It's up to Andrew Jones now. Okay. Gonna pinch hit for Harnish here? No. And he grounds out. It's too bad. It's two strikeouts hurt. They're pinch hitting though. Hit number 11. I don't know how much longer we can do this. We can. Okay, well, that was not shown, but we just picked off Fernando. Oh no, he didn't pick him off. That was a, another hit. Let's get Harnish out of there. This is this is too much for me to take. First and third. Another hit. I, I don't know how long this can go on. He's given up 13 hits. Still letting him pitch. I really wish they would just pinch it for him. 14 hits. 
This is what I deal with every fifth day. He's just getting crushed. But notice, no home runs. That's how it's been. Another hit. Get him out of there, please. Finally. Well, we're not out of it yet. Paul went into the bullpen. Phillies have a really good bullpen. Is that another Ray Durham triple? He's doing just as well as he did last year. Yep. I don't know how many he has. I think that's like 11 or 12. And Walton drives him in. So we're within run. Jeffries Bond Manto coming up. This is looking pretty good for us. Until Walton got thrown out stealing. Back it up with another single. Man, that would hurt. Stolen bases have been working well. We've been stealing at a good clip. Here's Townsend pinch hitting. Jeffries does steal second. Townsend strikes out. But he'll stay in the game and play first. For Manto, we'll see if Grimes can hold him in the eighth. Some big errors in this game. Grunts a lot, I guess the four for five. And important that we got JP Cruz there with McGuire and the big right-handed bats on deck. So let's see what we can do here. Klesko's pinch hitting for Alex Rodriguez and doing so unsuccessfully as he normally has been. And then we'll go for Colburn. And Justice is hitting for Andrew Jones. And he comes through and ties the game for us. Nice. He's been much better in May. Now Hoyles is in. He can't convert. So we go to the ninth. And it's Wetland. Oh, no. He's been so dominant, but McGuire got him. So they have the lead on us again. Wow, hit off a wetland too. Just when I brag about how dominant he is. Oh, his first walk of the season too. Wow, really bad for him. He's been just lights out. All right, well, a little bit of an adventure. We get the run, so we've got to make another comeback here. Jason Christensen, longtime reliever, pirate, others. Durham's one for five. All right, Walton's got a base hit. We're in some business. Oh, no. Okay, not a double play. It's up to Bonds. Take the walk. Townsend's terrible against lefties. And he grounds out to first. Well, that was a tough one. Strange to see only 11 runs on the board when we combined for 30 hits. Grudzelanek had four. McGuire and Eddie Williams each had three. 18 for the Phillies. It was just nonstop. Jeff Manto tried to carry us. Three hits and a home run. Justice had the big pinch hit homer in the eighth, but five runs just wasn't enough today. And then on the pitching side of this box, I just don't know what to do about Pete Harnish right now. No walks, no home runs allowed. He's just getting pounded, it seems like, every time out. Even the last outing, he only gave up one run. He gave up, I think, 10 hits. And despite all that, giving up 15, we got into the ninth tied, and you'd think we could have held him with John Wetland, but not today. And then Tim Rumer continues to hold the Phillies rotation afloat with his strong performance. I got two more games against the Phillies, and hopefully I'll, they'll, their other stars will be just as bad as they have been. But uh, Rumer's the player of the game today. In other scores for the National League, the Expos lose to the Cubs, so we're still tied for the best record in the National League. Jason Giambi and Chipper Jones both homered in that one. Gary Sheffield broke his fibia in that game. He'll miss seven weeks, so a bit of an opening for the Braves, who beat the Rockies today. 
Reds shut out the Dodgers, so they pick up a game on us and are only two and a half back. Howard Johnson got a home run for the Rockies, although they lost their game. And then Tim Scott did pitch for the Padres, but he took the loss. It wasn't even a save opportunity. So he remains at 307 career saves. American League side, Brad Radke got his 10th victory as the Angels cruised over the Cleveland Indians. Steve Finley hit two home runs in that one. The only other player in baseball with 10 wins is Charles Nagy, who's also an Angel. And then our boy Sherman Obando got a home run. If you guys have followed the, the Rangers era, he was a big part of it. Blue Brewers get themselves a blowout win over the Red Sox. And then John Jaha smashed two home runs against the Mariners, so he's going to be at 3,000 hits before we know it. Then not shown here, but Steve Avery threw a shutout, won 6 to nothing over the Blue Jays. Only 103 pitches what it took to do that, so... Rangers have a nice grip on the wild card currently in the AL West. Here are the standings at the end of the day. Both of the Eastern divisions get a little bit closer, and the Braves might be uh, drooling a little bit to see that Sheffield injury. The Royals take the lead in the AL Central over the White Sox by a game. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're two and a half up. Got to feel good about this team. Today's, you know, losses happen. But uh, with getting Bonds back and hopefully Daryl Sherman's not out for long, that things are still looking up if we can figure out what's going on with Pete Harnish. So that is a wrap for today. As mentioned earlier, I'm starting to make some different videos. I actually released one yesterday, a tutorial on game settings for historical games. So if you made it this far, certainly interested in more ideas. It seems like the next one might be something about how I do all the sounds, or not, not even just how I do it, just how you can uh, how you can find them, how you can get them in the game, how you can even make your own. But if you like, you know, have some ideas, put them out there. And then in general, if you like the comments, content, not comments, uh, give the video a thumbs up and help others find it. If you uh, enjoyed yourself, at least I hope you've enjoyed yourself, then hopefully we'll see you again back soon. Take care.